What is going on, guys? Welcome to Double Taps. This is Manage Those Buttons podcast dedicated to the FGC. This is episode 368. On today's episode, we've got an interesting Harada interview that's making its rounds, has us asking ourselves, are fighting games hard? We're also going to check out the new Ermac and Mavado trailer that just dropped for MK1. I'm, of course, Crash. I'm one of your hosts for this week's episode. And with me, I have Static Gorilla. Hey, what's going on? Glad to be here yet again for the yet. infinite amount of time. <laughs> yeah, for forever and ever. Yes. Can't leave. Uh, speaking of people who can't leave, uh, we also have, of course, our voice of reason here. We've got Ja in the building. Hello. <laughs> it's it's fine. I'm actually happy to be here. <laughs> he, he's actually he's actually extremely happy to be here. He's so he's so stoked. It's so stoked. You should hear our pre-shows. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to all our returning listeners. We appreciate you guys for giving us two quarters for another credit this week. And for those that are new, stepping up to the cab and listening to the show for the first time ever. Thanks for joining us. You got swindled. All right. So if you're new, by the way, if you don't know already, uh, chapters for all our episodes are available on YouTube, Spotify, on any platform that is supporting podcasting 2.0. So if you want to kind of dig through and check out the, the you know little subject matter that we're getting into specifically, make sure to peep that out. Uh, with that, uh, before we get started on the on the you know new topics this week, we're going to take a peek at last week. Uh, in true tradition, we got, of course, our poll and our question of the week. Uh, let's uh, start off with the poll, actually. Uh, so we had a poll last week uh, on uh, a multitude of our platforms, right? We asked you guys, what aspect of the fighting game community do you like most? We got A, the competitive scene, B, strategy and gameplay, uh, C, community events, and of course, D or four with characters and lore. Uh, and actually, it was it was pretty tight um, in the beginning. I was checking out the polls very early on, but and it's still some of them are very, very close. But strategy and gameplay took it above all what a 43 percent. So uh, uh, not double like the, the like. Uh, what is it? Competitive scene and, and community events actually were very, very close with Lord right behind. Uh, but yeah, 43% strategy and gameplay. Who who, who would have known, guys, that, you know, the biggest thing about fighting games that you like about the community is actually playing the games and the strategy, oh. the competitiveness. Kind of not a, not a bit of a shocker, but I'm yeah. actually more shocked at how close uh, some of the other ones were. AKA winning. Winning, winning. Yeah. You like who does? That's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent every time. Uh, if we put that poll up this week, uh, we'll see if if they go for if if we get anybody that says no for winning, they're lying. I I almost want to challenge those results because I'm just kind of like, okay, yeah, I get it. Strategy and gameplay is like why you you play the game, but like uh, you know, to keep playing the game though, is it really mm. the strategy and gameplay? I really think it's the community, which will be either competitive yeah. scene or community events. So that's how I was thinking about it. But I'm like, okay, if you guys say so. Yeah, if you guys say so, absolutely. Yeah, if you guys are putting it in, we're going to read it. This is like the teleprompter on Anchorman. He just put it there. I will read that shit. He says that. <laughs> Bed man? Bed man? <laughs> um, so, so that was last week's poll. Thank you very much for everyone that has, you know, been getting, uh, has been getting involved in it. Uh, but we do also have the question of the week. Uh, so we, uh, you know, kind of threw out uh, something to kind of get the gears turning. Uh, last week, we did talk about uh, the following. So do older games slash players truly outshine the modern ones? Or is it a matter of perspective? Basically, we were talking more along the lines of the, you know, the, the conversation of like the old guard and the new guard um, and kind of like the the quality of player or even the quality of game. Uh, so we took to, of course, all our platforms, Discord, Spotify, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. It's there. And we've got a couple of uh, a couple of questions, uh, qu a couple of answers, excuse me, here that we wanted to point out. So this one came from Spotify. This is from Jason Cotran. Cotran. That's that's a yeah. If, if I spoil the if I have completely butchered these last names, pretty sure that's Cochran. hit me up on Twitter. What is it? Like Cochran? Cochran? Yeah. Like, oh, Cochran? Like, okay. That yeah, works too. You know? All right. he, I think it's about <laughs> perspective. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about perspective. People will have their biases from the good old days back, but it doesn't mean much when you have players like Sonic Fox in the scene. Uh, yeah. I mean... That, that's that's pretty solid that, that's 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 a that's a good argument good viewpoint on it um it is i i think it definitely does lean more towards on the perspective side of things um because what was high level then is like different from high level now 
right? Or rather, well, some things are timeless, right? Some things are just like fucking timeless. Uh, Moment 37 is a perfect example of that. It's like, it does not matter like how how long ago that was. That's still going to be rated at a certain level of like, you know, insane. Um, But the perspective on it definitely is, is, is an angle that, you know, affects both, both, both of the ways that you think about like how a player quality is then, or even game quality is then versus now. And of course you have your own personal biases to it, right? Uh, Sodium Rising hits us up on Discord. Uh, This is a bit of a longer one. Uh, Let me preface this. It's a bit of a longer one. I feel modern day fighting games focus more on knowledge checks and mechanics than retro ones. Uh, A lot of retro games uh, mainly were mainly fundamentals with a mechanic or two than supers, right? Like you just had, you know, you're down here crouching forward, your fireball, so then you had super, right? That's kind of what, he, what he's getting at. Uh, retro games also had a lot more pushback, so punishment was still a thing, but not as prevalent as it is now. Modern day games have a lot less pushback in mechanics that change frame data that requires the players to know more about frame data than I feel in the past. Uh, it's it's still, I mean, so it says the premise here that uh, both uh, the preface here that both games take a lot of time to practice and master to get good at. It's just a matter of, you know, you enjoying playing more. Uh, that's That was actually a really interesting take between like saying like how the retro games or the older games, you know, definitely were much more fundamental based and maybe they just had like a thing or two like supers, right? Where, or maybe EX, right? Where like the kind of the, the little nuances they threw in. But like while modern, modern day games have like it kind of, we still have fundamentals don't get me wrong it's still there but like the mechanics are like the biggest part like i don't know i don't know if you kind of felt that way static with like street fighter 6 like don't get me wrong when you're thinking street fighter you're thinking you know any current game you still think fundamentals but like the mechanics as to what they've included is kind of like just it, it is just important but i feel like sometimes it overshadows it the- at times like drive rush is talked more as being footsies Right, like drive rush in itself is footsies more than footsies is at times. Yeah, because it's like you, the 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 what do I say? You're trying to react to it, and people yeah. have always been trying to react, and that's been the complaint about it is that there's like the screen freeze, and then it eats inputs, or you know. So mm-hmm. that's you know before, like in Street Fighter Four, it would be uh, my character has reach, all these reaching buttons, like it's so yeah. good, like I can't approach because of those buttons. And then drive rush can or sort of be a 50-50. Like the character can ignore that, not not by absorbing it, but they ignore it by just going in. And mm-hmm. sometimes you have to be so ready for such a fast move to to react to. So that's the problem I've actually been having in the game. It's like, well, I'm doing something, but nothing's working for it. So yes, I agree. So so the the mechanics seems like in modern day ones, the mechanics are more of a you're you're feeling it's more of a, a, a of a of a threat than than even like the fundamentals yeah. are. Wow. Oh yeah, because and that's where well also that's where the games sort of work around. Like uh Street Fighter Five has the V trigger mechanics and the V system. Whereas Street Fighter Six is the um the drive gauge mechanics are or the system. Because then if you take away all of that you just get Street Fighter Two or Street Fighter Two Turbo. Okay. Okay. You, good you, point, so good Ultra point. Street Fighter Four has the Ultra mechanic. The yeah. rest is all the meter that's like third strike. In Roger. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's a really good perspective. Uh, mind you, we did have a bunch of other uh, answers, a bunch of other uh, uh, answers for the question of the week. I can't just get to like all of them, but we do appreciate everyone that has uh, been interacting and actually uh, you know getting involved in it and contributing to it um if you want to get involved make sure to join us of course on our discord double tap that gg forward slash discord follow us on twitter at double tap fgc as well and subscribe to our youtube we engage on the community post there and on spotify we we post it up all over so you want to get involved get get in there we post up the question post up the poll as well um so if you want to get involved get your voice out get your opinions we want to hear from you guys check us out there all right so we're going to be going to a quick ad break because we got some some deep stuff to get into. We've got a Harada interview to break down and some really interesting talks on, uh, you know, what makes fighting games hard. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back right after this. All right. And we're back. Uh, just wrapped up question of the week. Let's get into this uh, this Harada interview that's kind of been making his polls. Or rather some quotes of this Harada interview has been making his polls, uh, making, making his rounds, excuse me. And I wanted to go check it out. So 
uh, YouTube uh, on a YouTube channel called uh, Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences. They do a bunch of interviews, uh, exposés, uh, and just overall content around the video game industry. It's uh, writers, directors, producers, creators, everything in between. Uh, Harada was just one of the recent uh, content pieces that was released. Uh, this was uh, recorded back in January, so. This was before Tekken 8 actually officially uh, officially dropped. Um, they even stated, I think, in the beginning of the video that, hey, you know, we're not going to release this till afterwards. Um, but basically, it's just uh, uh, about an hour, 20 minutes of just like sitting down with Harada and uh, and and actually just like kind of breaking down a bunch of different subject matters, uh, everything from like his early days to uh, the, the current esports scene and everything in between, right? Like. Once again, this is about Tekken 8, so it was kind of like just a build up to market for Tekken 8. Uh, but it, it had some other really interesting concepts there as well as, uh, as like the future of fighting games, uh, you know, the, the current, the newer developers that are being, you know, that are coming out into the industry. Um, it was an insightful like video. It was really, really cool stuff. And um, it was interesting to catch Harada not in like his like Harada persona that he does, like when he does like his bar like Harada's bar interviews and such where it's, you know, the guy's got a certain character he plays for the community, right? That's like he, being the face of Tekken for years. He's got a character to play. Uh, but this one, he was just pretty upfront about everything, which was really, really cool. Um, I think uh, I think my favorite, some of my favorite quotes for him in there were how he talked about uh, uh, fighting games and and uh, like some of the the... the the concepts they're trying to in introduce in Tekken 8, like in the, even the social aspect of it, like he even brings up PlayStation Home, which I was like, that was the last fucking thing I thought he was going to bring up and how PlayStation Home was like ahead of its time. Um, yeah, it, that was, that was like, <laughs> that was pretty cool to check out. Uh, but the entire video was just basically him breaking down a bunch of these really cool subject matters. Like Static, did you like anyone like stick out to you that you enjoyed? So I did like how Yoshida was actually talking about how he, he's playing the game but more from a casual perspective and more of an rpg element and that he's more used to rpgs of course fighting game he's not gonna you know spend time into a fighting game or as much as we would uh per se because i'm sure he has a lot of work to do you know i did like his perspective on it being like an rpg now granted myself i haven't played the story mode aspect of the game yet i don't know if i will because i am enjoying just the the game in ranked in and of itself the the reason I, I'm focusing on the interview, it not just being just like you know, content that they just put out there, but it's um, it, it's there's been some quotes that's been pu uh, pushed around, and it kind of like you know some of the topics that Harada brought in, uh, kind of had me thinking about this this concept, and it's like it's a simple question to ask, but an incredibly uh complex amount of different answers perspectives you can put into it but we're gonna we're gonna kind of dig into it so uh you know one of the cool things about the the interview uh, with harada was you know he got to talk about things like the current um player base right the next the new generation of players right the younger uh the younger generation right now that's playing the games that are uh you know getting the, the baton passed to as well as like the casual and hardcore fighting game communities right that's 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 kind of was the topic we we're talking about last week and one quote that keeps coming up which i just find interesting um that kind of has been getting tossed around is uh don't worry states young gamers prefer uh team games so they shift blame when when they lose right じゃあ、今の若い人はそうかって言ったら意外とそうじゃなかったりするんですよ。あの、1対1で白黒つけるなんて。しかも勝負にそんなはっきり。で、しかも格闘ゲームって1対1だからもう負けた時のこう受け止
is completely different from what you have in something like a team-based game, right? Because you could be doing good and you can say your contributions help make the, the, the victory happen. Why, and you can even check, right? You can even check in certain games, like how good you're doing, right? You can have the gold medals in Overwatch to show you're doing the most DPS, which I think they got rid of anyway, but that was a, that was a thing for the longest time, right? That was an argument point, right? Like, how are you going to tell me how, yeah, like how, how the fuck can you tell me I'm not doing good when I have gold and I'm the support, right? Like I, the amount of times I've heard that, right? Uh, versus like when you say like when we lose, it's because you're all trash. I was good, you know, copium. <laughs> all that stuff. Right. Um, and it really got me to thinking more about like, man, is that something that, that is that just another barrier that I just didn't realize existed in, in fighting games for, for the casual, right? Like, or even the person that's just trying to learn, is that a barrier in itself that I just like, seriously just thought it was not there because I'm so used to it. Right. So many years in fighting games, it's just second nature to me to lose and be like, yeah, it's my fault. Like I fucked up. Oh, I would definitely say it's definitely um, I, I w I'm trying to think of another word other than barrier because I don't think it's a complete stop. Right. But it definitely adds resistance mm -hmm. to getting obstacle. Uh, it's an obstacle. Yes. There we go. Like, and, I, and I guess technically speaking, a barrier is an obstacle, too, depending on who. <laughs> who How big of a with. barrier? How big of an obstacle <laughs> yeah, are we talking? Here? Is exactly. it a wall or is it a fucking fence? Exactly. I can get over one over the other. <laughs> but it definitely is an obstacle to 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 joining in on on fighting games but you know like you said well first of all thank you for recognizing me you know i appreciate that it's nice to be seen it's nice to be seen but but the one thing i i tend to do is I, i'll typically take my arguments and flip them on their head and say well what if i'm arguing from the other side what mm -hmm. what like what am i looking at here and well, I think Harada is right. Like, there are definitely people that are like that where you know they prefer team-based games because you can you can project your failure you know versus having to look inward somebody who's really if that is who they are if they have no accountability if they're dodging accountability if they're that, that type of person they can totally do it with fighting games so because mm -hmm. you know one of the things he you know harada talked about in that interview was like you know we're trying to figure out how to accommodate that player so maybe if we do 3v3 team battles that will help and this is why it will not um because that's this is not I'm, I'm looking forward for 3v3 on Guilty Gear Strive. Come on, man. I'm trying to blame well, Gabe as my anchor when we do tournaments. <laughs> well, that's one of the topics that I was coming up with, which 2XKO I feel like brings up brings that up with 2v2s with co-op play. Um will you really blame your best friend or <laughs> or do yes. you want to just play yes. 1v1? Like do Abs you want to play Abs fucking with, <laughs> with so those there's, characters? You know? There's two things. There's, there's two things I want to say about this, right? And like as first of all, okay, let me, let me start with this. Okay. First of all, if you have a person who is dodging accountability, if they're always projecting outward on their failures, right? They will figure out another thing to blame their failure on, right? And we've seen it all the time. People blame game balance for their failures, even oh, yeah. though they know how the game works. They're not adjusting to it. They're not adapting. They're not learning. It's the game's fault. It's balanced wrong. You know, mm -hmm. one. Then you can also have people who they will blame the person they lost to, saying that they use cheap tactics. They're cheating. Projecting outward. So those type of people like, I don't know, Harada, you can't save them. <laughs> you can't save everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so don't save her. Don't save her. <laughs> <laughs> so like you have yeah. that, but then even with this, like, you know, idea of going with like, you know, team based. So two V two for two X K O three V three. It doesn't fix the issue because even in those team environments, it is very clear who the dead weight is. You know, if you're fighting 3v3 and two people win their match and one doesn't, you know, even if all three lose their match, but you got knocked out, like if you got whooped, it is clear to see like, oh, mm -hmm. you can't talk to me about my loss when you can't, when you keep dropping combos, when you keep hitting, mm. you know, uh, you know, whiffing on hits, when you're making bad decisions, it's, st it's a, it's a team game, but it's still on a, like, even in 2XKO, it's a team game. But when you are on that field, it is 1v1. It is just you. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going to say. I was like, it may be a team. Now, all that really adds is just another point 
of argument between a person, you and your friend, or you and your whoever, <laughs> yeah. to to argue against like what happened. Like you can argue when you fight each other and be like on both sides. But now if you're playing together, it's like yeah, you're still just just you out there. Team based games are different because everyone's out there fighting together. It is yeah. a team comp dynamic. Uh, uh, you know there is strategy and and ways to approach and attack, right? That you coordinate, right? Coordination. There is no coordination in in fighting games. It is just, the only coordination is from your fucking head, head to your hands. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And even like, and in not all team-based games, you could do that. Like take Counter-Strike, for example. You know what I'm saying? If you, make a, if you make a bit of bad decision and peek at the wrong time or you miss a shot, or that's on you because your engagements mm-hmm. in Counter-Strike are typically like you are supposed to do something. Like I, you're supposed to like throw the flash over this entire building because that's how Counter-Strike yeah. works. <laughs> you yeah. know? Just uh, set and, up, baby. And, and it bounces wrong. I mean, that's on you. Like it's, you know, so it doesn't. Oh, and like I said, I said I don't disagree with what he's saying because it is true to a degree. And I also want to make clear that I do understand that in this interview, he's not trying to cover all bases. It was just a conversation. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm, yeah. those for are sure, kind of the, sure. the weak points I kind of see in that argument. That oh, you know, because you know what he was trying to say was that you know, like like you mentioned that people aren't. I should say not playing fighting games, but more, less likely to play fighting games because of this mechanic but i do have something else to say about it but i'll, I'll kind of save it for later <laughs> you know okay well well also just to just to also make sure we're, we're covered here um you know not all not all like other genres are like that too like there are plenty of still 1v1 games out there that get picked up but they're like there's there's a difference there in terms of accountability like that's how they get take how they take it i don't know what it is about fighting games but like losing a 1v1 say in apex or fortnite or whatever even in brs like I don't know why, but like it's like just easily, it's just easily more. I don't, I don't get it. Like it, I just oh. feel like it's less pressure I can, in those than it is. Could you say because of the random factor? Are you gonna call me to say that or? It's not just that, but fighting games are oppressive by nature. Like that's it's oppressive. It's just like when you're playing actually even certain shooters like Overwatch. Like in some cases, like people will get like way frustrated. Uh, mm. when they're being beat by certain characters because they are oppressive. Doomfist, when played properly, is oppressive. B- uh, Hammond, when played properly, is, op- is oppressive. So fighting games in general are oppressive. You are sitting there fighting a person 1v1. Your job mm. is to hit them as much as possible, take every advantage, and it'll be basically not, like, yeah, like don't not let them play, not, not let them play. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like you yeah, don't let them basically play the not let them play. But guess what? On the other side of it, that's what your opponent's trying to do to you. Exactly. Right? Yes. And whoever can do that better is the one that's having fun. Exactly. <laughs> so only one person has fun at a time. <laughs> only one person has fun here. No. Um. So yeah. So basically, from from him him talking about like the 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 accountability between the team you know a team game and a, a fighting game it, it got me thinking about like the, this very very simple question like i said we can have a whole slew of podcast episodes on uh but you know really want to see if we can hone in on some of the the pain points here is are fighting games hard and you might be like, Crash, that's a very stupid fucking question. Yes. Okay, end of show. See you guys later. Make sure to follow us, Double Tap FGC. Hit the queue. Uh, <laughs> but no, seriously, um, fighting games are, like, fighting games are hard, or really, why are fighting games hard? Um, and yeah, it, it really does break down to a bunch of different aspects uh, that I'd, I'd like to focus on. Um, but granted, of course, my my awesome host here can also chime in on on, on their perspectives on it. But the the you know I I kind of break it down to certain components. So we'll go into each category really. Like off the rip, like what whenever you're introducing someone, your friend, your I don't know, your 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 girlfriend, your parents, your cousin, whoever that maybe wants to sit down and play with you, right? Like and, and maybe are showing an interest in it. What are like some of the pain points you hear off the rip? You know when it comes to fighting games, uh inputs right is is one right off the rip like the idea of like being able to you know you have to press these buttons to do this uh information overload it kind of gets you know once you once you kind of get past the very early stuff of just like moving around you know and pressing certain buttons now it's like okay well the character does this and then the character can do that or the game plays like this is like another component um 
and then the actual execution of it is another one. Uh, there's th- there's several more, but those are like some of the common ones I tend to I tend to kind of come across because I recently had to teach someone a fighting game or trying to teach them to actually play a fighting game, and I was catching myself like trying to not overwhelm them with information because I knew if like if I gave them too much, it would then be too intimidating, and. Like, it's funny because that's actually was another point that Rada said is like how fighting games have gotten a reputation for being intimidating to get into. And like a lot of these aspects, funny enough, are things that these developers are trying to solve or have been trying to work on and develop to solve over the decades, right? Um, more, more, definitely more in the recent years than, than, than previous ones. Um, but it's because it comes down to things like accessibility. Right, like you know, accessibility is a big component of it. Yeah, I, I thought the way he worded that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Like my ears mm-hmm. kind of perked up because it kind of shows where his head is at in it. Because in his head, and you know, you know, it's not just his head. It's a lot of fighting game players are like they they hit like they they think it's a misconception that fighting games are hard, or they feel like people think fighting games are hard, but fighting games really aren't that hard. And that's what he gave off. When he was saying mm-hmm. it, because he was like, you know, over the past 30 years, fighting games have had, got this reputation that they're hard. And he thinks that it's due to the community maturing, right? And the competitive scene. So people will see Moment 37. They'll see mm-hmm. what's happening at Evo and they're like, I can't play that. You know, that's what they that that's what they think. Well, sorry, that's what he thinks is causing this issue. But what he does acknowledge and what I don't see a ton of fighting game players, especially older fighting game players like you two, they don't acknowledge, Ugh. right? How the massive amount of mechanics that have been developed over this oh. time, right? They do so, not acknowledge it. Gabe does because he's like, oh, no, I do. That's I one do. of my points. That's yeah. one of my points. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> I think of old games and how they don't have anything. You just have to guess how to block, how to jump, how to. There's no dashing. There's no meters. It's just health yeah. bars. Go. And the, the reason I think that older p- players don't really think that fighting games are hard or, can, or have a hard time acknowledging the difficulty of getting in the fighting games is because those players, right? incrementally learn these things you go from learning the basics in street fighter 2 or whenever like you know that early that super early age and then you finally get to a fighting game that has teams and now you have the fighting game that has meter and now you have fighting games that have these statuses and you have like you yeah. know it gets it just over time you incrementally learned all this stuff and now newer players are kind of like okay this is the game not that hard you'll be fine when you have he- 10, 15, 20 years of experience incrementally learning these things. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's funny. I was, so when I was talking earlier about like teaching someone, right? I, 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 underst- I understand that. I'm luckily, I'm self-aware enough to know that I've got enough skin in the fucking game that I'm like, close my eyes, give me inputs, give me a character. I can probably get you with a couple trials without even fucking looking, right? Uh, I got no life, whatever. Um, anyway, uh, when I was teaching this person, this was a person that like had no no history whatsoever in fighting games. As a matter of fact, they had more history in like games like League than anything else. So kind of there. So it's like I, I you know, I've I've had this discussion before, like, hey, League players aren't really that fucking different from us. It just looks different, but they are fucking maniacs just like us. They're all psychos. Um, in a good way, I mean. Uh <laughs> uh in, in terms of combos, you know, character knowledge, Let's all that see. kind of stuff. There's yeah. there's a lot of fundamentals there. I was trying really hard to focus on just that, the fundamental idea of what the fighting game is, right? It's you got health bars, you've got characters, each character is doing something, and your goal is to not, you know, bring the health down. The hard part was definitely trying to, you know, to introduce them to all the mechanics and explain in a way that they just can understand. But it's really fucking difficult to for them to obviously just get it like like that like mm-hmm. you said earlier it takes time like once you your your knowledge of the game or your expertise in the game changes in 10 minutes then it did in an hour then it does a day then it does a week if you play the game right you're 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 much better after a week than you were in in the first 10 minutes mm-hmm. and 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 that's the difficult part about fighting games is that you have to 
do a lot in order to get to a level where you, I think you feel good about it, that you're actually feel that you're competent, that you can do something, right? Like whether that means it took you a week to do a combo, it took you a week to get your first, I don't know, like maybe more than one uh, round in a ranked match or something like that or online match in general, right? Um, I feel like there's just a lot of investment. The investment that you still need for fighting games feels like it's a lot before you can feel good about playing because I can pick up a shooting game and as soon as I hit somebody in the fucking face, I feel good like that. And I will do that within the first five, 10 minutes, even in a game that I've never played before. Yeah, and that doesn't like translate to a fighting game where you land a combo, but then you that that person's like, okay, you know how to do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm oh, like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, you know. Yeah, let me X factor real quick. It doesn't transfer when like you know you don't get that 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 win. I mean, like there's just certain things from mm-hmm. other games, like certain feelings, like getting a kill in a match and then still winning that match. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it does not translate to to like holding a combo in a fighting game. <laughs> And then still losing the match. But I know Gabe had something to say. We, I, I, Yeah. Um, usually a lot of times when there's like a lot of, not even casual players, just like, hey, a friend brought Tekken to the house. Like I remember 2019, mm-hmm. went to a uh, Super <laughs> Bowl your party. Your cousin's in the other room playing Tekken at Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. Or I went what to y'all Super doing? Bowl. Yeah. I went to Super Bowl party. <laughs> My friend bought his Tekken and he was like, hey, bring your arcade stick. I'm like, okay. And then everybody's like using their arcade stick. And I'm going to sort of like, this is just people are just going. And I'm just like, I'm doing things and then they're all asking like the number one question in the room is how do you do that? How do you do that? How, how do, you do, do, that? You do you do that? How do you do that? And, What'd you and, tell them? That's the question. Oh, my friend just told them L1 and then pushed the shortcuts in Tekken 7. Yeah. Oh, so okay. yeah. yeah. Or actually, no, he wasn't telling anybody. He just picked Lucky Chloe and was doing it. And he's like, oh. well, I don't know. I'll just do it. But I'm like, no, you do this and this and this. Like, I'm okay with teaching, but then there's like this complexity of one person who's just like, yeah, it's always the lower cool. tiers. It's yeah, always yeah, the yeah. lower <laughs> tiers. They gatekeep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they gatekeep. Uh, sure. They, they want that precious, precious win. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, information overload is just like, yeah, overwhelming amount of information to learn in fighting games in order to be competent is like one of, uh, I, I think it's, 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 I feel it's, it's definitely higher on the echelon of, <laughs> I feel like it's higher in the echelon of like mechanics in games, but I know that's not true technically because there's some games that are just, even as a fighting game player, I look and I go like, that is fucking nuts. I couldn't see myself doing that. But then now I'm literally putting myself in the shoes of like, you know, the casual, the person that's trying to learn fighting games saying the same thing to me while as it's like, you know, I'm like, no, it's, it's easy, but it's, it's something you just develop. Right. But like, with that, the, you know, Jai, you made a good point very uh, like early on too. It's actually even before the show when we talked about like just a centralized like a hub for information, even like like being able to just find a place to get the information you need to understand or to just be able to understand. I mean, obviously, in fighting games, normally it's like a tutorial, right? A tutorial is 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 like nowadays. I tend to judge a fighting game more often when it comes to like a tutorial as to like how good they can kind of show the mechanics. Because if you like for me, we'll understand what the hell that is, but always on the idea of like how a tutorial does with the person that has zero knowledge. Are they able to go through the lessons one through 10 and understand or, or have it implemented in a way for them to learn it organically? More recently, examples like that are like Street Fighter VI's World Tour. Like, I think World Tour is an amazing fucking mode, first yeah. of all, in Street Fighter. I think it's great, like, on a sense of content, in a sense of the leaning into the IP itself, the lore of it, the characters, right? Everyone's fans of, yeah, cool. But the little mini games that they've had introduced in it that make you do things that you do for a normal match, just in another, you know, environment that doesn't make you feel as pressured. Like, I thought even back then when they introduced it, I was like, yo, that is genius. That is a great way to evolve and actually get that information out there without letting the people know that they have to fucking learn this stuff. That is true. But well, let me say this. Here's the, here's the butt. Here's the butt. Okay. <laughs> let me say this. <laughs> Y'all hear a gun cock somewhere? Karate kid, right? Wax uh, on, wax off, paint the fence, right? Mm. That does not become useful information until Mr. Miyagi <laughs> shows Danielson. <laughs> what it's used for when he actually mm. gets to the point like show me wax on wax off 
show me paint the fence. Mm. That information or those skills are useless unless you know how to apply them. Mm. That that's okay. the thing. So I now I have not played Street Fighter Six. I don't don't hate me. I have a huge backlog. Okay, <laughs> but you know I haven't played Street Fighter Six yet, so I haven't done like World Tour to see what those you know mini games do. And I'm sure that those mm. mini games definitely help you learn skills or uh, inputs and stuff like that that can help you in the game but without learning a when you're supposed to apply that and then b actually getting practice in applying that knowledge you know because that's another that's another aspect of fighting games that doesn't really get mentioned a lot that if you were to break down the different mechanics in fighting games you would probably also have a similar amount of mechanics in a lot of other games in terms of the sheer number of mechanics that you got to deal with in any given match. But the speed mm-hmm. at which you need to be able to deploy that knowledge mm-hmm. that your eyeballs see something happening, your brain is firing, and then your fingers mm-hmm. do the thing that you're supposed to do. That speed is, I don't want to say it's unmatched, but it is close. You know, like, like shooters, don't get me wrong. Like you definitely have to have very fast reflexes and mechanical skill, but like you don't like the level of of strategy you have to deploy in such a short amount of time usually does not match up to what you would see in a low level fighting, you know, low level like matchup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. I, I think I remember it's uh, I wish I could find the fucking graph of it, but I think I remember someone posting up like Tokido's like reaction time, like a pro player's reaction time to like pro sports sports athletes. And I think it's somewhere yeah. between like he's like close to like a baseball player's like reaction. It's like it's like really, really close. And it's like I don't think those like maybe one sport past that, but it's like between the I mean, I don't think they, they counter like race car drives or anything. Those guys are fucking nuts. Yeah. But it it's yeah, it, it being able to apply it as well effectively which my counter argument to that is world tour has these mini games but i think the way they designed all these random fights that you could do that are npc based and of a variety you know everything from a fucking fridge that's just shooting projectiles to kind of help teach you like hey this is what a projectile does just substitute the fridge for a person literally the same thing they're still abiding by the rules of the game um is like how i think how their method of the Miyagi, like, hey, this is why are you put it into practice, right? Like, you learned how to do these mini games. All the random battles you're gonna notice are going to be affected by it because they're the same motions. You're just learning how to apply it there. But do they tell them, like, in some way, like, hey, remember that refrigerator you were fighting? These guys do something similar. The reason I say yeah. that is because you know we we like, you know we're kind of inching toward this conversation of accessibility, and don't I don't want to push into it too fast. But the thing is, like, some people just don't connect those dots. They just yeah don't. Like, the way their brains are wired is, like, I do this thing for this thing and this thing for this thing. And if it does not match up, then they're not doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. So that you, you kind of have to account for people like that if you're trying to do some type of, like, training and education on these things so there are a few fgc content creators out there that are doing educational content and they do a good job of it in turn but i a lot of that content is for people who play fighting games already you know already it yeah. reminds me of um kind of like dieting content that you find online like when people are trying to like you know figure out how to lose weight a mm-hmm. lot of the content you find online is not for the average person. It's for people who compete. It's for people who like who do who do like who do like a bodybuilding and stuff like that. So that's why you have so so many people who try to follow these like diets and rules and things like that and end up crashing and burning like badly <laughs> because it wasn't for you in the first place. And I think a lot of yeah, like fighting game like educational content is is kind of like that. Like it's not really taken into those consideration those it, people who are interested but don't play fighting games yet. It it's like the whole like you know the tool is useless unless it's for the right job right like if you right. don't know what job to use it for a hammer you wouldn't use as a drill right or use a drill as a hammer right it's, you it's, wouldn't it's, use it's, a hammer as a drill it, speak for yourself <laughs> I mean true yeah will it get it done will you have done irreparable damage to yes. maybe the wall and or your your, or your 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 device and you hope the wall gives you back that warranty and your I don't marriage. know but and your marriage yeah and your marriage and whatever yeah this got dark quick um. <laughs> 
but yeah <laughs> yeah so information overload is like kind of like is one of the biggest components for me and and the thing is like companies and developers have definitely strived forward to try to uh bring that in like combat cast is another example I and mean, we were just praising nrs for you know the their story you know their story development raising the bar i think they raised the bar in that too because they are doing dedicated streams for characters with people that are like Yes, they, they they are definitely fighting game people. Duh, they they develop it for one. But you know, I think they do a good enough job where they can at least break down like, oh, why would you do this move here? It's yeah. because well, we'll say someone is spamming fireballs full screen for me. I want to get in. I do this, and they actually show you what it is, right? Like I think the combat casts are a great example for it, and even character breakdowns, like for like Strive when an, another character is dropped. They do a breakdown of like every move and they go like, use this move when doing this. Is it still a little vague? Is it still a little, you know, are there more questions? Absolutely. Um, they can't go into like every fucking detail because, you know, they only can, they can only spend so much time, I guess, on a video. But it's at least a, a progress, you know, a kind of a, 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 a step forward for it. Yeah, I mean, great commentary is one of the probably one of the best tools you can have to teach people who don't know how to play how to play. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so. When I used to play StarCraft a lot. StarCraft 2 a lot. And I was terrible. I was bronze. And I wasn't going anywhere. But I started, <laughs> I started watching. Those Zerglings were not doing much. Yeah, they weren't. Like I was. I started watching this. Uh, and they, I didn't even watch it to learn. I watched it because it was funny. I started watching mm. this YouTube uh, series called Bronze League Heroes. Oh, I know exactly what that is. Yep. I found out, like, as I was watching that the guy was a commentator for StarCraft. And what he used to do, it, and I never submit it. I'm like, he ain't going to be laughing at me. Nobody going to be making jokes about how terrible I am. <laughs> but, like, what he used to do was, like, he would, people who were in Bronze League in, in StarCraft 2 would submit their matches to him. And he would commentate it like it was a high-level match. But yep. just the most crazy stuff would happen because it's a bronze match, you know? Yeah. And basically as he's like kind of making jokes and like, it was never anything too, too like bad. Like, Oh, this guy's terrible or anything like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but yeah. like it, he wasn't he's making, trying to flame you, but you know, you gotta, you gotta laugh at yourself. It, yeah. He's basically time. poking. And it's, it's really funny what he would do as he was, exp as he was like doing that, he'd also explain, well, typically you see people do this, but this, this must be some type of amazing strap. Let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> see it pays off, Johnny. Exactly. So he would actually tell you, and I don't even know if he was really doing it on purpose. He would kind of tell you the way it's supposed to go or what should have happened or why we're in this situation right now. Like he's telling you all these things and all that information really helped me learn how to play Starcraft. Even you take like James Chen, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I you know I was follow, I follow, I still follow him on Twitter even though I don't use Twitter anymore but this is this happened years ago uh I mean this had to happen like four or five years ago at this point where I get this Twitter notification it's a it's like a tweet from James Chen and he is uh commentating a Tetris tournament and I'm like this competitive mm -hmm. Tetris let me yeah, I, I was like let me see what this is about so I started watching it. And just through the commentary of him explaining what they're doing, I became a much better Tetris player in general. If I would have just watched the Tetris match, there would be no difference for me because I wouldn't have known what was going on. But the way he explained it helped. So, yeah, like, you know, straight line goes here. Exactly. About it. That commentary like is, 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 a, is an incredible tool. Incredible tool. Absolutely. Um uh, apart from that, apart from like information and and being able to ha have access to that information or being able to have that information properly translated or rather reach to the you know the individual or the player that's trying to learn, I think the next part or really the next piece there is is now like you know having the knowledge is one thing, but then execution, right? The, the great big e word execution or accessibility are kind are, are like right right there on par right um more so now than ever you know modern controls auto combos um what else do we have short you know shortcuts uh as well like those are all components that are you know been argued in in different fashion right like you know the old heads or the the hardcore will say like oh this is killing this but it's you know it actually does come from a place of of growth to be honest that's that's what it's meant for it's meant to be able to grow the community because 
a community or or a scene does not grow unless new people come in and and pop you know populate it and and it becomes a more available for the masses because that's at the end of the day you know just like how you want to market you want to market to everybody because you want everybody to be you know to buying in to your product whatever it may be that's the goal well in in fighting games like more than ever you want to make sure everybody and anybody can join the community and just jump in and play the game Right, so there are going to be system mechanics there, and that's no too different. Like in Tekken Eight, with their latest DLC, right, Static, like with fucking Eddie, they've kind of done. Not only did already you know the system mechanics already apply something, but that Eddie himself has some differences. Yeah, major. Um, for me, it was the the the, the launch button that he has is usually mm-hmm. down forward and two kicks. It's always mm-hmm. been, even since Tekken whatchamacallit this is like Tekken 3 like like forever even Christy had down forward two kicks which is Mirage which is the launch they change it to one button down forward and one button and now I'm finding myself doing the wrong punish and I'm like where's my move and also there's one of the trials is literally down forward that one button x about six times and you get a full combo Full combo into into install or not install but into power up, and into I'm power like up, yeah. I'm like you know, and it does sixty one like like sixty one damage, and I'm like that is really good damage for a Tekken and for a corner carry move, and I'm like the complexity that I liked for picking Eddie was gone for me at that moment. I mean, granted, you can still get a a good amount of a combo, and you can still do certain things in the handstand, and still go into um whatever it is and into getting those those power-ups but the complexity of going into a different um a different stance from certain moves feels gone to me even though some moves end up with those stances and then it's sort of like it, it dumbed it down so that it could be just use these moves in order to go into those stances and then go into the next and it just doesn't flow right for me um granted i have to learn the character again but I was able to go from Tekken Tag 1 into Tekken Tag 2, which is, again, there are like three iterations of Tekken in between. So Tekken Tag 1 came out after Tekken 3, and then there's 4, 5, and then 6, and then Tekken Tag 2, and then Tekken 7. So Tekken Tag 2 and 7, I was able to work with Eddie. And even in Tekken 4 back in the day, I was able to use what I'd known from Tekken 3 and Tekken 1 to play Eddie. And, you know, like the, the the handstand stuff, he was able to do like the same launches and even like the same sort of like just just everything was there. And this one. I'm just not feeling it where where I don't know if now also I noticed um somebody I saw in a comment of a video was like, um, I haven't seen a lot of Eddie players when I play on online. And I think it's the stigma of, oh, wait, Eddie's too easy. You can just button mash with him or mm-hmm. it could be that. um. It could be that 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 changed for people that used to maybe play Eddie. I don't really yeah. know. I'm not like I haven't played online enough either. You, you got all the data, yeah. but I mean, you've played the character okay. enough to to know, like you know that that clearly they did it because of the archetype of Eddie, right? The the history that Eddie had, you know, and the idea is that they're trying to make it accessible. Do you think yeah. it's like more of a detriment? To the character, I mean, you're you're. It's gonna be subjective for you because you have a history with the character. But I mean, anyone, Joe Blow, mm. whoever wants to come in and actually try and play the game, you know, picks up Eddie. Like, do you think the access, the accessibility controls or the changes to him, you know, help kind of are going to be the benefit to actually help you know make that person stay and actually have them try to then you know learn and and continue and actually dedicate to the game? I technically wouldn't happen to know because. A lot of times when newer players play, they'll do something that is they find as soon as as soon as they find something cheap, they will keep doing it. So, for instance, in Tekken. Fun fact, fun fact, pro players do that, too. Oh, no, but this is. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. Like, I'm like, bro, if I find something cheap. Are you trying to win a moral victory or the match? There is. Listen, once once round starts, fight hits heaven or hell, whatever it is like, there's no moral ground. It is. I am going to beat you. 
You, you can argue about it afterwards at the bar, at the fucking Waffle House, wherever the fuck you want to <laughs> start a fight at. But like, you know, there ain't no moral. There is no moral once uh, once fighting starts, man. So a new player, you know, doing something cheap. That means they're like, oh, this helps me win. But hear me out. I'm not going to blame them. If they were to <laughs> play, let's say myself, and I know how to like low parry and where to low parry it, then I'm going to be like, oh, for instance, I once entered a Tekken tournament. I did the jab, jab, flip low kick that he that he always had and he still has in this game that's cool but i got low parried in tournament and the dude popped <laughs> off and i'm like oh that's how it is okay i mean all right it's my fault for using a move that's like 10 years old and he he ended up pairing it and beating me so um yeah, so he played but, for 11 years so he had you on that one right yeah exactly <laughs> probably he's probably played since throughout the entire time but um yeah, at, at, when I say that is that because they're going to be using that or or like my friend who used the shortcut to do moves and to be the strongest guy in the room of people that don't play the game. You know, uh, you were going to say, Ja, go ahead. No, I was going to call him a gremlin. but I, guess. <laughs> I love I love those guys. I love those guys. I, I especially love it when I find out that they're like that. And then I'm like, oh, I mean, I'll play a little bit. And just, <laughs> yeah. just, just slay. Those are those are yeah. those are great. I don't I don't ever seek it out. But like when it happens in front of me, I'm like, I, I can't not help yeah. myself. You just parry every fireball. Oh, oh yeah. goodness. Oh, goodness. Anyway. And, yeah. No, but but in, in all serious, like. I think once they find that, they they get it countered, then they'll find the next thing and then they'll move on because mm-hmm. it's sort of like, oh, I, I've gotten figured out. Well, there's no reason for me to keep playing this game. I'm not winning anymore mm-hmm. since you're cheap and you, you know, you found the way and you know, you play too much. Like the one time that's, I that uh, that goes back to that accountability factor that yeah. that job was talking about that that that's the telltale sign. It's like if someone that can't deal with that early on, yeah. like I'm going to tell you right now, you either you need to grow out of it or you're j- just not cut for this, man, because right. it gets you are still at the very tip, tip, tippy tip of it. Yeah. You're not going to feel the lowest until you get popped off on <laughs> in yeah. front of everybody. You're what? not going to feel the sting until like 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 you're going to feel the sting when you lose because the game's going to tell you lose and you're going to look at it and it's going to be like you fucking lose. And you're going to be like, fuck, like you're going to feel bad, <laughs> but like you don't feel the sting until like you get popped off on. Oh, one of my favorite exchanges is when uh, I, I think it was Dragon Ball, and I was like, did an air combo, and he goes, "You're one of those players." I said, yeah. "What you mean, those players?" <laughs> I, I, did, I did a B and B. I did a, 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 X X launch X X X X X, and he's like, "Oh, you're one." Of, I'm like, "Bro, oh, that's not even say half it was of cheap? it." You want to see the rest? Did oh, of course. Was, and then I had know. another friend who goes, "Oh, I can't stand when they do juggles in Tekken." I'm like. That is Tekken. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> My guy. It's one of the, so that's the thing. Those are the type of people that you can't really you can't really account for. Like if they don't like yeah. the base the bare bones basics of the game, like, oh, like you so you did the B and B and like uh he was like, That's cheap. What do you mean? They tell you to do that in the game itself. You play the single player, they tell you to do that. <laughs> you know? So it's like Yeah, you can't really save those players. So I kind of feel like if you D- developers will waste their time trying to get those players to play fighting games. That's like people who would play shooters and they don't like shooting guns. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Overwatch fixed that problem with like Mercy, but then what happens it's, to those players? Yeah. What happens to those yeah. players when Mercy's out of meta? They don't play the game. You yeah. know, you can't really, like, you can't do anything. You can't really do anything about that, unfortunately. You know. Yeah. So, so actually, that that leads me, leads me to probably the the next the the next component there, which is you know adaptation, right? Like mind games and adaptation in in fighting games. Like, like all these components are all like all feed into like the actual just the premise of the match, right? You have your ninety nine second count. You got your health bars. You got your resources, and you have to be able to uh, execute, right? execute your combos you have to understand the the character matchup right there's the, that information overload and then you've got the mechanics of the game as well and then everything you're doing right is in relation to what your opponent is doing like if your opponent is full screen you're not pressing certain things if your opponent's close up you're not trying to do uh something long range right uh and 
and beyond like the mechanical skills, it, like it just it involves that psych that you know psychological component to it, right? Where you're trying to anticipate relative to what they're doing, right? Like if they jump a lot, if they're doing the eddy whatever forward one jab to <laughs> flip whatever, right? That's clearly that's adaptation there. Uh, but like the the psychology or really the 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 mind games in and the nerves. I guess if you want to put it into anything, let's just call it nerves of playing is like another component that I tend to, 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 to see as like one of the harder barriers to, to kind of like get past in fighting games because it's just so oppressive. Like we said earlier, it is an oppressive game. So you're trying to adapt to an oppressive situation, an oppressive game that all accountability to what happens is on you and the choices you make in it. And there's just nothing else to blame past. Mind you, I want to give a small percentage to things like bad matchups and stuff that does exist. There are terrible right. characters that literally can't do shit about some characters. And that's not on you. I just want you to know that's not on you. <laughs> Virtual hug. Uh. Here you go. Enjoy it. Um, I don't give a lot of those out, but um, yeah, like that's, that's, I think one of the, one of the biggest components as well is because if people can't get over the adaptation as to why they lose, because that's all it is. Like some people call it a misconception. I still think it's, it's like not a rite of passage, but it's just natural. You are going to get beat down. Like you are going to get beat down. No one is just going to come in and just be like the shit. You're not going to be Daigo when you come in. You're not going to be your Tokidos. You're not going to be your Mena RDs when you just first pick up the game. You are going to get your lumps, but the goal is to learn from it. Is That's the that's like the biggest lesson when it comes to fighting games that it pushes the most is that you have to learn why you lost. And, and then one thing is learning it and understanding. The other is applying the changes to it, which sometimes it's even harder because there's things like muscle memory. There's, you know, some of it's literally just reactions that you have to be able to react in order to overcome a certain situation. Um, and that's like, you know, that that's kind of, that's pretty universal, right? Like it, it's no different in shooters, right? If you see someone far away or someone that taps strafes or bunny hops, or it's able to, you know, I'm thinking more on the apex side of things, you have to be able to adapt for it, right? You have to be able to adjust your aim, your angle, your shot, depending on the gun that you have, you have to be able to take all that into consideration when, when doing that, but fighting games, it's like, ah, I don't know. It's kind of, it, I don't know what it is, but it's just that that barrier seems even harder. That doesn't seem like an obstacle. That just feels like a full-on fucking mountain to get over <laughs> for, for people. See, I think there's a deeper conversation there because in order to adapt to a game, you have to like it enough to want to learn and want to adapt to it. The the, the great question, the great question, like, yeah, do I even like this? Why am I doing this <laughs> yeah. to myself? God, and you'd be surprised. You know what? You'd be surprised how many pros you could ask. Like, they, that they're, like you think they would hate like what they do? Like at some, the way some of the reaction, because how personal, how hard, you know, because it does take a lot of dedication, a lot of work, but then they'll still be like, you know what? I do like this game at the end of the day, or some of them, I have definitely seen a couple like, yeah, I don't like this game no more. Right. Maybe, you know, there's a difference there, so but yeah. It, it, there's it's, a perfect example right now with uh, Idom. Idom oh, made yeah. that rant of a video complain, not even complaining. It was just the crowd. I think his chat was like, pick Luke. And he's like, oh, uh, pick Luke is hard. Oh my gosh, all I have to do is like crouch medium. Oh, I grab. Let me grab Pre loop and put him in the corner. Proceeds Oops, to do a play up. by play yeah. of his own match. Yeah. And it goes like 99% his way. Though the only difference was like he had to jump out the corner one time. Mm -hmm. And then everything he said, it's just a perfect video. And then he mentioned, I believe, Mena, the best Luke yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Oh, I can pick your character and do what you do with your character. And then <laughs> yeah. started a Twitter rant. So, um, you know, and, and classic I, FGC story. Yeah, no, it's a classic. And <laughs> it's just it just shows you I, I personally am having trouble with uh with Street Fighter. I entered a a ladder tournament where I just lost every match. And I've never I last time I entered I didn't lose every match, but am I practiced? Am I only playing in tournament and not practicing? Like, do I wanna practice? Do I not? Like everybody I think hits a barrier, so to speak. It's almost like burnout. Almost like we talked about that kind of thing in a previous episode. Go check <laughs> yeah. out episode. Uh, I want to just throw it out there. Three sixty, like four, I think. Sure. Yeah, I'll, uh, it's yeah, let's, let's <laughs> ask. Don't worry, Josh is gonna dub over my voice on the number and just put his voice on it and be like five. 
or something. I, 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 I am not right. doing that. You heard it here first. He's going to do it. <laughs> um no uh but yeah so yeah mind games and, and adaptation man it's like that's like that that feel i feel like has just been has, has been like a big component especially if like you really especially if you enjoy the game like if you don't enjoy the game maybe you don't feel it as much because you just are enjoying the game you're having fun right but eventually it's got i think it gets to a level where you get when you get competitive because you want to win or you uh you know you kind of start like growing into that side of the spectrum a bit more where you're just now just want to keep what i mean no one wants to just pick up a game to, to lose right you, you, you want to succeed you want to proceed you want to progress in some way shape or form um in fighting games the way the way people more or less they gauge it even though it's not 100 percent correct it's like is by winning right um but the mind games the aspect of it is i think a huge component because it's like having all the tools being able to apply them that, but then actually like face someone that has the same tools or has, you know, the same works in the same roles in the game as you, how do you overcome that? How do you overcome putting into practice what you're, what you know, and actually, you know, creating that environment where you can actually succeed in? That's, that's where it gets, that's where it gets a little difficult, but yeah, it's definitely, we can definitely go down the, uh, the rabbit hole, uh, even more on that because that one, that, that in itself is just, yeah, it's pretty deep. So we've got mechanics, we've got information overload, we've got execution and accessibility, um, as well as like the psychology behind fighting games, or rather, you know, being able to play fighting games and learn them. But like, those are kind of, the, those are the barriers. What are ways that we can get around some of them? Like for me, you know, when I was, uh, once again, when I was kind of talking the story earlier, and I was teaching someone uh, the fundamentals of it, that's really what I want to boil down. When if you're trying to learn fighting games like here's some just quick some quick advice if you're trying to learn fighting games we've talked about it before where it's universal fundamentals are universal across all of them they might look different the fighting games might look different even ones have an extra you know axis of movement right like tekken you can still apply fundamentals across the board uh it's it is all about space control it's all about you being able to control the options your your opponent has, like how they can, you know, hit you in certain ranges or throw something to be, you know, the, to to damage you even from long distance, you know, from from full screen or, or or wherever they may be. Understanding the fundamentals of getting around them is like the is the biggest thing I I would always want to push on someone that's learning because, like I said, it being universal, like you can apply it anywhere, and that just having those fundamentals down helps you really break down the situations just as quick because you don't have to look at you know look at it as a uh with all the mechanics even though the game wrong there is still a degree where you have to take the mechanics per game into account obviously because each one is bringing their own kind of flavor their own kind of sauce to the dance but at the end of the day the, it is still about space control it is still about those health bars and just the way in which you get them to zero is what those games are are bringing to the table but at the end of the day, that is what you're trying to do. So I wouldn't want, I don't want anyone to kind of go in and try to overcomplicate themselves because once you have it down packed to the fundamentals and you learn what your options are, what your tools are, you'll be able to kind of, you know, apply to the right, to the right, uh, apply the right solution to the right problem, basically. About you guys, uh, what are you guys' thoughts and kind of advice you have for anyone that is jumping into fighting games now? For me, I personally would teach a person how to play a character that has everything in the game first for instance like learn a character that can do everything or a character that can abide by the all the rules of the game so mm. like a character like let's say ryu he has inputs he has you know certain like i'm not gonna say like pick your character he has that inputs. Has damage. how long yeah. have you had this information yeah. <clears throat> i know that's what i'm saying he's had them well you know he has the common street fighter inputs the uppercuts the tatsumakis mm. the the hadokens you know the extra layer of knowledge and then now he doesn't have all of the inputs such as like mashing punches for blanca or, or a, a charge or a charge character right but that's also something that a lot of players even now even pros that are like, I don't play charge. You know, that's a barrier that I have, but I don't play charge. That's not how I, I learned it. But you can still start with somebody to do that and then they'll go to another character. Now it doesn't, now that can actually change. Like 
for people that have arcade sticks. Like they'll use an arcade stick and they're like, oh, charge characters work better for me because of the square gate or something like that. So um, it's definitely where the person is learning and what type of way they want to learn. But I would definitely teach them something that the character that one character has everything of. So you want to make sure the character just embodies what the game's mechanics are about. Now, yep. would you do so? I, I, I subscribe to kind of the same thought when I'm learning a game or learning a new game. I would just put a note here because if you're ever going to show someone this in the future or teach someone in the future, I would say give them a legacy character and give them a new character. And the, my reasoning behind that is because the new, the legacy characters are always built, their legacy kit, the way they play, are always built towards the mechanics of the game, like mm-hmm. you know, in the modern, in the modern game. While as the new character was kind of built with these mechanics in mind, because there's no no reference for them. Just my ideology behind it. I, no. I've, I've said this before on the show, especially when you're picking up a game. Like I said, if you're picking up a like if you're picking up Strive, play like a legacy character, and then Ugh. play a new character because you're gonna kind of you're gonna get two different ways in which they designed them. Sorry, because no. one literally doesn't have a reference book that they're trying to adapt, while the other one is just you know whatever they wanted it to be. I hey, don't even you know, I, aka I, I, like your Nagos. I wouldn't teach a person to strive. I'm sorry. I just, oh my God. I wouldn't want somebody to go through stand medium or stand slash with, with, uh, soul. I wouldn't want them to go through that. <laughs> you prefer them to go through any other version of soul so, before no, this one. They can play a totally different game. Oh, don't play. Say, don't play. Guilty Gear. If you don't wow. want to see the words counter across the screen, just, wow. You, you know, just said, don't play. Guilty Gear. What about you, Jai? If you, if you were to give someone some advice, Guilty as the ultimate, it. as the ultimate spectator, Guilty Gear is not a new new player. Uh, excuse game. me, you got to get it right. I'm, I am the greatest spectator in the FGC. The great, oh, it's the, the greatest, greatest, spe- the greatest my spectator in the my FGC. Apologies. Okay. My apologies, my apologies. Yes, thank you. Just put some respect on it. That's all. Thank you. He's got so many titles. I keep forgetting. <laughs> so, um, actually, uh, so one, I, I kind of have to rebut Gabe a little bit because. Mm. In terms of not that you're wrong, because I think the ID the, the the theory behind what you're saying is 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 pretty sound, but it kind of uh, I don't want to say ignores, but it does not acknowledge that there is value in having a base understanding of how other characters work, even if mm-hmm. you don't play those characters. You know, you need to understand how base like, like how at least the theory behind how a character is supposed to. Is supposed to work because that will help you fight against them, you yeah. know. So that's why I think, sure, you know, maybe you focus on that character that uh, that's that can do like everything, but at mm-hmm. the same time, I think you still need to spend some time with these other characters so you can at least understand what they can do. So, oh yeah, uh, you know, they can do, you know, they don't do it to you, <laughs> basically. Right. Well, I mean, like for instance. Ryu might have a Shoryuken input or an, an input for Shoryuken and Zangief in the past games would have a Shoryuken input for just a to- completely different move. So as long right. as you can do that move and you can implement, oh snap, I did Shoryuken and now I can do Green Hand with this the same input, then I can yeah. apply that to who else has a Shoryuken. That's how I learn a new character. I say, oh, what is this? What is this? Did I do that? How did I get there? You know? Yeah, no, that's why I said I think it's it, it's sound advice, but you know your new your like your new your character is going to be playing against others, and so it's yeah. good to know what they can do. But in terms of like what advice I'd give to a new a new player, uh, I mean, I think you guys you know you don't want to over- overload new players with new advice, and I think what you guys have given is pretty good. But I think like the onus of helping out new players isn't just on the new player themselves, right? Like, I think it has a lot to do with the game developers and and the community, too, True. you know, in terms of bringing uh, new players into the fold. And mm-hmm. I feel like fighting games are a little bit behind the eight ball. I should say, wow, that's wrong. I, I use that terminology wrong. I, I am sorry, whoever made that. But it's a little bit, the fighting games are a little bit behind in terms of accessibility, like the rest of multiplayer games are. They're they're a bit behind, like they're just now getting around to it. These modern controls or the special controls, uh, or you know, I you know, I didn't play Eddie, so I didn't realize that um, you know, they they reduced or they made his inputs easier, right? 
like all that I think is good. It's a good idea to make those imp- to, to it's in terms of accessibility, as long as it doesn't cheapen the character or give the character more value than they're supposed to have. Right. It's a balancing act. And I think that's that's the hard part that the fighting game developers are really going to have where you want to make the I, I feel like a good strategy is to make the characters less complex, easier to play while still giving them a bunch of options to use and make the gameplay itself complex. If that makes sense. You guys kind of follow me. There? That's Street Fighter six. Mm-hmm. Every character yeah. is the same as before, but has an extra layer except for Ed. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, you know, I know you, you're not very happy with what they did to Ed, but does it cheapen him, or does it make him like? Does it give him more value than he's supposed to have, or does it just make it easier for a player to get in and play him? That's mm. a good question. Yeah. I haven't, and I haven't he, learned and, him. And he was designed, and initially, that he's also a special case because he was, you know, built from the ground up was, to be that right. Like his inputs, yeah, even after, from yeah. five, were controversial because it was. What is it? Down, down button for uh, no, was, punch for was, for his uh, Shoryu or something like that. It was right? just for three buttons. It was three just buttons, like two yeah. buttons and then yeah, three yeah, buttons yeah, for the like, EX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I because was like, oh, if you play Smash, go play Ed. Like <laughs> you, you have your like no, no knock on people, but just so that it can be easily accessible to something that you don't like inputs, direction sure. inputs. Yeah. So that's like I don't mind them making it easier because it makes it more accessible and it gets you it distills it down to the core of what the competition is, which is essentially like strategy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We talked that's about why, that last week, right? Uh, I think so. Either that or mm-hmm. offline, like one or two. Mm-hmm. It, it's blending all together for me. I can't. Remember. A lot of conversations over this over this Discord. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, but that's 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 why I don't mind the modern controls. I don't mind the special controls as long as the like you know it does not give more value than is earned. I guess you can kind of say like it's it's a balancing act. It really it really does come down to balance. So the 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 fighting game devs have started there when you know, they've, they've kind of just started doing that and i feel like they're about 10 years behind or a little bit more because you know if you think about league of legends right nobody is going to really complain that uh, that you know league of legends is like cheap or not competitive or anything like that when the success of league of legends came from its accessibility yeah. free to play no barrier to entry there. Low specs. You could run it on a toaster so more people got involved. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, early game was easy to pick up and play. And the way they handled teaching you how to play early game. That's what separated it from Heroes of New Earth. And especially Dota. Like whoever, I'm not sure, you know, if you listen to this podcast and you're old enough to remember Dota, like actual like Dota, remember how hard it was to get involved in that game? You know, that's why League excelled. And look at it now. So, and this, and that taught the games industry that you need to make it accessible, but also like basically easy to get into, easy to learn, high skill ceiling is what you're looking to do. And fighting um, games could totally do that, but we're just getting started with it. However, I would slightly disagree because fighting games were trying it, but never did it right. For instance, oh. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had simple mode. And nobody, everybody was banning simple mode. But also, simple mode wasn't good. Like, you couldn't get far with simple mode anyway. Um, and then you even have, like, other games like Persona who had auto combos. Um, and auto combos were kind of good. I think there was an overhead in there in most of them. Uh, or just, like, a, a particular, like, animation. And mm-hmm. Dragon Ball did that in 2018, which is still like I guess late. Street Fighter Six is doing uh, it. Well, yeah, fucking, well, uh, yeah. Now, now, what he's been, he's saying now, and some oh, yeah, some yeah, games yeah. ten years ago were trying they, it but didn't know how. Try, yeah, you yeah. gotta try. I mean, yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna get it right the first time. That's no. what I'm saying. It's it's going to take iterations. It's gonna take some time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's the name of the game. There, that is yeah. literally the name of the game. I'd still argue that it's still behind it. They're just now getting yeah. getting around to it yeah. and. I, I I almost double argue it because these game devs, no matter what people say about them, they are smart people. They're smart yeah. people. And if it was a big enough issue for them, if it was a, 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 a an, an important enough issue for them, 
they would have figured out how to do it well over yeah. over this period of time. Because think mm-hmm. about like you, uh, you, you mentioned Persona and what was the easy mode in Marvel's Capcom Three. Yes, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, normal and simple mode. Simple. Yeah. yeah, simple mode. How many fighting games have we had since then? You know that basically yeah. have like oh well that failed. Let's just move on from oh. that. You know. I think Rival Schools also had one where I remember being a kid just pushing R1 and I had a super combo in the air and I was like, yes, great. Until somebody <laughs> taught me how to do like an air combo in Marvel 2 and I'm like, this is all I'm going to do the rest of my life is just do an air combo in Marvel I mean, 2. You can, even, you can even kind of look at Marvel as a Capcom 2 where you can press a single trigger and then, you know, you do like your, your supers there Team or Hepburn, whatever yeah. it was called there. But then you can change your inputs and have them come in one at a time. Some guy yeah. I used to play with in high school used to kick my ass doing that until I figured out how to do it. And I got him back. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, fuck you, Ted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So, and yeah, that, I mean, like, exce- yeah. Ex- accessibility is just like really important. But it is important to balance it so that your higher level players or competitive players don't feel like it's not worth playing. So that's from like the game developer side of things. But from the community side of things, I even feel the FGC is a bit behind in their educational content. I, I do. Like, I think like, you know, don't get me wrong. You do get, like I said, you have some like, 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 you, like you diaphones out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah like that mm-hmm. are, that are, do, are, 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 are doing the good work of teaching people how to play fighting games. But like, way of the salt. Yes. It's just, it, but compared to other like communities, you just don't have that wealth of like knowledge or tutorials or breakdowns. Like, you know, you do, you do like a uh, League of Legends or uh, even like Overwatch or a bunch of other games. Like, there's different types of educational material for different people who learn in different, you know, ways. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel, and I don't necessarily feel like that's on the devs. Like, yeah, they can put tutorials in the games, but guess what? Those tutorials are based on how they expect the character to play. They're based on what they think should be happening. And we all know that's not what always happens when those characters hit the public. So I think like, you know, the FGC is a little behind in their onboarding process. Like you look at me, like, you know, do you work a corporate job, Ja? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, not these forms. You need to get through all these training before we get to you into your into your desk position. That's what yeah, it feels you know? like. But like it's like Shit. I do feel like they're like they're they're missing a bit in, in the onboarding process. And I just I, I can't necessarily put my finger on it because I don't know the whole FGC, of course, but like Maybe there's just not enough like collaboration between content creators. Cause I really don't see that. You know, I think people like kind of have ideas and they just let them go to the, to the wayside. I mean, if you have an idea or if you're trying to figure out how to make content for yourself, like come into the Discord, talk to us. Like I've been making content for almost 15 years now. You know, Crash, he you know, he works, <laughs> he does actual, like, important esports work and has been making, uh, you know, for a long time. And then, like, if you need content, you can talk to Gabe about the human cost of dropping combos. So you have, like, you know, uh, either some real help, <laughs> <laughs> some real help in the Discord that, nah, I'm just fucking around. But, um, I know. yeah, I mean. Or losing to Captain America, that's great. Yeah, we're yeah. listening. To <laughs> for yeah. sure, for sure. So. But that 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 really brings us then really like kind of full circle, full full. What is it? Circumference. Uh, <laughs> full circumference to things. Uh, in in sense of like really the question that I want to to bring to our listeners, if you guys have been hanging around uh, throughout the, this entirety, it's like, are fighting games hard, or rather, really, what are the components? It's actually, excuse me, let me revert that. We're going to the poll first. What components of the fighting game uh, of fighting games are hard? Uh, we're gonna actually have them up with several different uh, several different options. We're going with game mechanics, combos, or inputs. There's gonna be a variation on the naming, but you know we're, we're, we'll get it down pack. Uh, ac- accountability, and you know having fun. Like, what's the hardest part about learning in in when it comes to the fighting games? We'll have the polls up. It'll be on Twitter. It'll be on Discord, Spotify, of course, on all those platforms for you guys to to. Uh, let us know your feedback. Uh, you know, just vote on there. But our question of the week: What's it's going to be more of a what the common like trope is that we hear in fighting games, and really what it, when it's like kind of incorrect. So the question is: What's the biggest misconception when it comes to playing fighting games? To give you an example: It's like 
oh, I need to learn combos in order to be good. That's that's a that's a pretty big misconception. You don't have to know combos in order to be good at fighting games, but it seems to have like passed the bar somewhere, you know, somewhere down the line that it's a, it's a must have. Uh, but we want to hear from you guys what you think are the biggest misconceptions when it comes to playing fighting games. Uh, that is pretty common out there uh, that you think you have another take on that. And with that, that is going to wrap us up uh, for this episode of Double Tap. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Of course, you guys can check us uh, check out my awesome host here, of course, at Static Gorilla, at Static Gorilla, and all social media platforms as well, right? On Correct. Twitch. Are you going to be doing any TNSs this week? Uh, yes, because last week was WrestleMania, so I was too busy WrestleMania-ing. Yeah, if, if you saw word. him out there, it was him. He was out yeah, there. I did get you, one you shout not. out from the homie Brandon. He saw my Evo shirt or my Evo jacket. He walked up to me like, I got to know this guy. He's wearing an Evo jacket. And I was like, hey, that was fun. hey there you go. Yeah, shout so. out to Brandon. Hell yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, and Ja, Ja Stradamus on social media platforms, including Blue Sky, right? Where he's not active, but he says he's active, but he's like, hey, he's. Well, Go talk to him. You, I'm, you got I'm, plenty, plenty, plenty of time to answer your questions. There. Yeah, definitely. I'm not active on Twitter. I'm somewhat active on Blue Sky. Like if you just go to joshradam.us, like if you put that in a web browser, it will take you to my Blue Sky profile. There you go. There you go. And you go. Of course, you can check me out at Crash Tag uh, VS on Twitter as well. And make sure to follow us at Double Tap FGC on Twitter. That is the main page for this show here. And then, and also make sure to uh, follow us. Of course on spotify on uh on blue sky as well we do have we do have the the blue sky episode is double tap uh i think it's still double tap gg i believe it's still our our address if you put that on the web browser it should be forwarding you to our account there you guys can check out uh or actually you guys can comment and give us feedback of course on all these platforms we love to hear it we always enjoy hearing from our community everyone that's been taking time to listen to us the least thing we can do is actually hear your feedback let us know what you like about the show so we keep on doing it. What we don't like about the show so we can go into the training mode, kind of work on that, you know, work on that matchup, of course. You guys can also support the show by uh, sh you know, liking, retweeting, sharing the show. If you think this is something that you can, uh, that another community, another Discord, uh, a Reddit, anywhere that you think might be interesting that you want more people to hear, feel free to share it out. It really does help a whole lot. We do appreciate everyone that has done it, everyone that is going to do it in the future as well. Uh, rating and reviewing the show also helps a whole lot. Uh, we still are a five star in iTunes. Uh, uh, yeah, that hasn't that hasn't stopped. Uh, uh, so we do appreciate everyone that has taken the time to to rating and on Spotify too. I believe we're five star on Spotify as well. Uh, so do appreciate that. Uh, you guys can uh, check us out, of course, on our Discord if you want to get involved in the question of the week or, of course, uh, on the polls as well because we do also post it up on the Discord. Make sure to join us. Double tap dot gg forward slash Discord. Check us out there. Check out our awesome community. Uh, come say hi. Come post up your questions. Uh, we're, we're, we just talk fighting games there. We like to get some matches on too when we can on whatever events that happened. Last time, like I said, AWT went on. We were just going in there getting some matches on with some of our, our viewers right afterwards. So we do appreciate it. Make sure to join us once again on this on double tap gg four slash discord almost messed up on um, the second time there uh but that's gonna be it for this week guys we appreciate you hanging out with us make sure to stay tuned after the show to hear about our other shows here on the matchless buttons network i have been crash that has been static that's been ja and we'll see you guys of course next week peace <laughs>